Today, I want to introduce you to a new tire from the Italian tire manufacturer, Vittoria Tires. This, my friends, is the Mostro. That's Italian for monster. And I'm gonna tell you if this tire deserves that name. So stay tuned. So first, a little background on myself. My name's Dave, and this is my channel, Mountain Biking for the Heart. I started mountain biking about three and a half years ago after suffering a pretty massive heart attack. I got on the mountain bike because walking around is just too boring for me. And since then, I'm hooked. I was hooked right away and I'm all in. So now you know where I'm coming from. Let's get into the review. When I saw this tire released, I picked up a few with my own money because I had to see what they were all about. In this video, these are my honest opinions and they're not influenced in any way. I paid for these tires with my own money and Vittoria will not receive the video or be able to review it before it's posted. So Vittoria places this tire between the Maza, their most popular trail tire, and the Moda, their mud tire. So when I got these tires in my hand and mounted up, one of the first things I noticed is it really does look like a Nagaro, but the spacing between the knobs is enormous. There's a lot more room between the knobs on this tire. The center knobs are only of a medium height. They're not as tall as I figured they would be. The center tread is made up of two rather small blocks right in the center with a minimal spacing between, followed by one larger block with two neighboring blocks filling in that transition over onto the rather tall cornering blocks. And I mean, they're tall, they are enormous. All of the blocks have a longitudinal and a lateral siping to allow them to deform and grip better on uneven surfaces like rocks or roots. The center blocks also have a step leading edge to aid in rolling resistance and the trailing edge is very steeply squared off to allow better braking to help the tire dig in under braking. Currently, Vittoria only offers this tire in one size, 29 by 2.4, and in two carcasses. The Enduro carcass with their coined 4C rubber, and then this carcass, their newest carcass, which is the Enduro Race carcass. The Enduro Race carcass is only made up of one really soft gummy bear-like compound across the whole tire, but incorporates a side and tread insert to help minimize punctures. The Enduro Race Carcass also adds silica to the graphene in their compound to once again try to keep that rolling resistance at bay a little bit. Most of my testing with this tire was done on my large e-bike, on my Kona Remote 160. It's a heavy bike. I also threw it on the front of my hardtail a couple times just to see how it rode on that bike too. I rode this tire off and on over several months to uh, ride in in many different conditions so I could actually give an honest review. Testing this tire, they spent a lot of time with me out on my home trails, the trails I know very well. A lot of these trails are pretty mild. One day I took it out on probably our most challenging home trail. It's made up of red clay with a lot of off camber sections and large rocky and rooty sections. So I actually waited on a day when it started raining and I put this enduro race carcass up front and the normal enduro carcass out back and went and rode that trail. I went down that trail when it had just started raining. There was just a very thin layer of wet clay on top and the rocks and roots, they were starting to get a little slippery. They were wet, especially with the little bit of clay that the tire was taking and smearing onto the rocks and roots as I hit them. I gotta say, this tire performed exceptionally. I went over some rocky and rooty sections that usually my butthole would be pretty puckered going over them in those conditions. But this tire just shrugged it off like it was nothing. About three quarters of the way down the trail, I figured well, I'm gonna start testing this tire, see what it's really about. And I started using the front brake in situations I usually wouldn't. When I just wanted to check, where is this tire gonna say no more? I did find that point and you know, I hit the ground pretty hard because of it, but I just had to find that point. 
And once again, I was really impressed with how far I was able to push this tire before it let go. The second time I went down that trail, because I had to try it again, I went up to come back down and it had been raining a good hour now. The clay was starting to get pretty soft on top. A little deeper than these treads could really give traction. They weren't digging all the way through the soft clay up top anymore and they were starting to pack in. On those smooth clay sections where there was nothing but the clay, this tire was packed and it was slippery. It was a mess. On the rocks and roots, it still did pretty well. Even though it was packed with clay, all the siping and the treads were still able to deform a little bit and still give a decent amount of traction on those rocks and roots. I was happy with its performance, I'll say, in those conditions, even though I'm pretty sure this tire wasn't designed to run in those conditions and no tire actually excels in those conditions. So the second big test for these tires was going out to a place I hadn't been before. It's in Altsenau or near Altsenau in Germany called the Com Trails. And they have the reputation for being the most difficult trails in Germany. And I'm going to let you know, they kind of live up to that. There are some trails over there, some black trails that are really black. They are really difficult to get down if you're just an average mountain biker like me. Most of the trails there are covered in a loose rock that is a little challenging for most tires. This tire did pretty well on those sections. I was once again impressed with how good it did do. I was actually running the Mazda out back because that's still my favorite rear tire from Victoria on the e-bike. And it was breaking loose in sections where this tire still had a lot of traction up front. But I prefer to ride with my back tire a little looser anyway, so it didn't really hold me back any. Where this tire really impressed me though was when it got really steep and really rooty and really rocky and it was a real challenge to get down. This tire provided grip that well exceeded my ability. I had no problem keeping my speed under control but my ability gave up and sooner or later I crashed and ended up walking down part of the trail. But no fault of the tire. It never lost traction. So I've been swarming about this tire, how good it is. Well, there are some downsides to this tire too. The first downside is mainly due to the carcass, to this Enduro Race carcass that I was running up front for a lot of the time. It is super, super soft. And with these smaller blocks, it had a very dead feeling or numb feeling on hard pack or if you're really going fast on a corner, it felt a little dead. The Enduro carcass was a little better, but it suffered from the same thing a little bit on the really hard pack sections under speed. The grip was there. It wasn't slipping, it wasn't giving up grip, but it just felt a little numb. I would have preferred it to feel a little better. As I said, the other downfall to this tire was in the mud, but it's not a mud tire. Victoria places it between the Maza and the Moda, which is their mud tire. So if it's really muddy, go with the Moda. And if it's really muddy and rocky and rooty, go with the Moda and this new Enduro race carcass, because this carcass is the bomb. So let's answer that question from earlier. Does this tire deserve that name, Monster? Well, to put it quite frankly, <laughs> yes it does. This tire has grip. It had grip in sections that I don't think any other tire would have had grip. Definitely not any tire I've ridden so far. And it really helps you build confidence going over rocky and rooty sections. That's not to say that this tire doesn't have its downfalls. It doesn't excel in every situation. But Victoria has tires for those situations where this tire starts to fail a little bit. If you're interested in Victoria tires, please subscribe or come back to the channel because I have a video coming out soon that explains all of Vittoria's tire offerings in the trail and gravity lineup. And I'll tell you where they perform the best and where you should probably choose a different tire. So subscribe or come back to the channel and see me if you want to learn more. Should be out within the next four weeks. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for staying and watching and make sure to come on back and visit me at the channel. That's all I got for now. Never stop shredding. Dave out.